So yeah, these are NECA figures. They're well sculpted, they're decently painted, have a great range of articulation, and are a perfect budget option compared to buying an SH Monster Arts figure. But before we go any further, let's discuss what NECA is. NECA, or the National Entertainment Collectibles Association, is a company that specializes in movie collectibles. They have figures ranging from Alien, Nightmare on Elm Street, Back to the Future, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and even more. But today, we'll be looking at their Godzilla line. I have acquired all all the Godzilla incarnations that they've made figures of. So, why don't we take a look at them all? We'll be starting off at the first era of Godzilla, the Showa era. And what better place to start off with than the original 1954 Godzilla, or Shodai Goji? Not really that much to talk about here. I like the suits and I like the figure. Now, since this is the first Godzilla figure that we're taking a look at, and because it's also the base for all Godzilla designs, I might as well discuss the figure's articulation. All NECA Godzillas have this range of articulation. They have a rotation at the head and the base of the neck and can open their jaws. They can move at the base of their arm, can bend their elbow, and can swivel at the chest. They can swivel at the base of their leg, but the bend at the knee is extremely tight. This is an unfortunate, worrying trend that's been carried out through all other NECA Godzilla figures. Oh, and there's rotation at the foot. Now, the tail has a ball joint at the base, followed by a few other ones, but towards the end of the tail is one solid piece that has bendy wire in it. This is something I don't like, as it limits the range of the figure and has the potential to even and break if bent too far. Fortunately, later down the line, NECA released figures that had more poseable tails. And this was a complete game changer when I first heard about this. This allows the figure to move fluently and gives it more posability. The hands are a different story. Some of them have a bend at the knuckle, while others just have a bend at the wrist. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty good figure. Now the figure does come with an accessory, that being its atomic breath piece. It's decently painted and sculpted, but I always thought it looked like a piece of rock candy. All you gotta do is open up his jaw shove it in his mouth, and there you go. Now, there's something interesting I must mention about this accessory. Before they came packaged with their Atomic Breath piece, there were versions of the figure that were repainted that included it. I, of course, didn't get these figures because they don't look good on their own. It looks like something that would be good for a display piece instead. To me, at least, it only looks good at one angle or one pose. But later down the line, figures came included with an Atomic Breath piece. Another thing that changed is the packaging. The packaging looked plain and boring, but later down the line they were repackaged in boxes that had their movie posters printed on it. It was on a flap that would reveal the figure. The 54 one in particular was repackaged with an atomic breath piece. But the weird thing is that when I got my 1954 Godzilla, it was in the older packaging but had an atomic breath piece. Now this figure did get repaint, that being the 1956 poster version. Here's the poster for comparison. The only reason why I bought it at the time is because I couldn't find the actual 1954 figure. And I was volunteering to work at an FYE, which allowed me to buy something on my way out, and I didn't want to go empty handed. The figure itself while not bad, suffers from a defect that I didn't notice until I got it out of the box. The figure's mouth and jaw looks malformed and mushed. It's even more noticeable when you open its mouth. And while I don't really like repaints, I think it's a pretty good figure. The figure also comes with its own atomic breath piece so you can recreate the poster. And while it is a retool of the other figure's atomic breath piece, it does look really nice. And now we move on to the next suit, King Goji from Godzilla vs. King Kong. Now, this is my favorite figure out of the three Showa incarnations, and is also my favorite suit from the era. He's really nicely painted with a shade of dark green. However, his hands are molded so close together like they're fused. And while I know that this is a suit from an earlier era, I do want to say he looks like a frog. But I will admit, his eyes and face are nicely painted. But if it's one thing I have to complain about is that his lower jaw looks really thin compared to the other incarnations. And this is the first NECA figure to come included with an atomic breath piece without a repaint. However, the 1954 Godzilla used the exact same mold for this breath piece. Heck, it's to the point that I can't even tell them apart. Wouldn't it have killed them to make it a slight shade of blue? Remember, this is Godzilla's first movie in which he's in color, and this is when his atomic breath became blue. It would have been nice if it was colored the same way the 56 version was, but anyways, you can also stick this into his mouth. And there you go. So overall, this is my favorite NECA Godzilla from the Showa era. And the last Godzilla figure from the Showa era is Mazugoshi from Godzilla vs. Mothra. The figure is decent, but it's not my favorite. I do take a lot of issues with this figure. From the tip of the tail upwards to the base, the paint on the dorsal plates looks very faded. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, the dorsal plates are extremely hard and stiff. Usually on a NECA Godzilla figure, the dorsal plates are soft and malleable. Thank goodness 
they didn't do this on Kiru Goji, otherwise they would have had a lawsuit. The next thing is for more of the suit than the actual figure. The neck looks unusually long. And while nicely painted, the face looks weird. And what's weirder is his teeth, which is more noticeable when you open his mouth. He too also comes with an atomic breath piece, this time a little longer than the rest. The end of it looks like a flute. And all you gotta do is open up his mouth, shove it in there, and there you go. And again, why couldn't they just paint it blue? So overall, despite its flaws, it's just okay. Not the best, but just okay. Let's move on to the Heisei era. Our first incarnation is Godzilla from 1984, or 84 Goji. And let me just say, I'm not a fan of this design. His dorsal plates look small compared to the other Godzillas, which is odd considering he used to be the largest Godzilla at the time. His hands look very small, and for some reason, one of his hands is molded differently from the other. And his feet also look very small. And I also don't like the design of his head, it reminds me of a bulldog. But hey, at least it's not the prototype head. You know what, I think I am happy for this head sculpt. Now the body was used for another NECA Godzilla figure, this being based on the NES Godzilla. I of course don't have that figure as I never played the NES game. However, I will say this, they had a missed opportunity to create figures of Red, Super Godzilla, or Bagon just to throw them in there for good measure. So overall, while not my favorite figure, it's decent, it's just okay to me. The next incarnation is Biogoji from Godzilla vs. Biollante. This figure kinda perplexes me. On one hand, the tail of the figure is the most poseable out of all of them. It's extremely long and allows for a lot of posability. However, the part where you plug it in is exposed and kind of ruins it. And at the tip of the tail, it's sculpted downwards. This is where Benny Wire could have actually been used. And the body looks kind of thin for some reason. That or it's just me. And the thing that puts me off the most for some reason is the head. Well, it's not bad looking to say, it's not the same as seen in the movie. It also doesn't help with the fact that if you open his jaw a little too wide, it looks kinda weird. The figure comes with his own atomic breath piece, and out of all of them, this is my favorite. I really like the swirly effect sculpted on it. And just like the rest, all you gotta do is shove it in there, and there you go. A repaint of the figure was released based off of him getting covered in Biolante's acidic sap, but I have to ask why was this figure made? There was no Biolante figure to accompany it, and I can only see it working if you had Biolante. You might as well cover the thing with Gak. You'll get the same effect. But overall, despite all that, I think it's pretty great. And our last Heisei era Godzilla is Space Goji from Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Fun fact, this was actually my very first NECA Godzilla figure, and I must say, after all these years, it still holds up. Not much to say here, the figure is really solid. Of course, I can't forget about the retool it got, that being Burning Godzilla. The figure has a pretty cool feature. Because the orange parts are slightly transparent, transparent, if you shine a light source through him, you get a pretty cool effect. But there is one problem I encountered with this figure. When I first got it out of the box, it was extremely stiff, and it still is. Now I could have used a hair dryer to warm the thing up, but I did and the ball joint at the head broke off. I couldn't find the exact same piece, so he can't move his head around. Here's how his head would have posed. Now another retool was released, this being a St. Patrick's Day exclusive from Loot Crate, but let me ask you this. When was the last time you ever heard of Loot Crate? To be honest, this was the only YouTuber advertised product I wanted. One disappointing thing I have to admit about these figures is that they weren't re-released with atomic breath pieces. This was the first Godzilla to have a new atomic breath attack. It would have been nice if Space Goji had both atomic breath pieces and Burning Godzilla with his red one. Despite that missed opportunity, on its own, I think it's a really good figure and perfectly represents him from the Heisei era. The next era we'll be looking at is the Millennium Era. The unfortunate thing is, is that these were the only two figures that came out from the Millennium Era. It would've been nice if they had Final Wars Goji, or even Zilla. Yeah, that's right, I want an articulated Zilla figure. I like this mutated iguana, they could've gave him a repaint based on his animated design. The first Godzilla we'll be taking a look at from the Millennium Era is GMK Goji from Godzilla Mothra and King Ghidorah Giant Monsters All at Attack. Fun fact, this is the only figure I got outside of the states. I got this from a flea market in Thailand. And out of these two, it's not my favorite. The way the tail is sculpted means you're gonna have to pose it above the ground, it doesn't look good. And compared to the rest of the Godzillas, this tail is awfully short. While the head sculpt looks very nice, there's a bit of pain from the inside of his mouth bleeding onto his lower jaw. And both of his feet have toe claws that are unpainted on the bottom. And the claws on one hand is painted slightly red, which makes it look like he fought another monster. 
monster. But out of those problems, it's not that bad. And before you say anything, just because I got it from Thailand at a flea market doesn't mean it's a bootleg. I have gotten official figures from Thailand. For example, one figure that I got from Thailand was the 2017 SH Monster Arts Godzilla. Despite it being official, there were pieces of the figure that kept falling off a little too easily. But they can plug back in. By the way, this is a good figure. So overall, it's an okay figure. Not the best, but it's just okay. And the last Godzilla from the Millennium Era is Kiru Goji, or SOS Goji, from Godzilla against Mechagodzilla in Godzilla Tokyo SOS. And without a doubt, this is my favorite Godzilla incarnation that NECA has made, and it's my favorite NECA Godzilla figure in my collection. In fact, this is where I get the design for my dorsal plates. And the tail is beautifully articulated, it's really fun to play around with. And at the tip of the tail, while it still has Benny wire, doesn't ruin it. But despite it being my favorite figure out of the collection, it does have one problem. The neck and upper shoulder is connected by one giant piece of flexible plastic. However, despite me saying it's flexible, it does limit arm mobility. And at his face, I think his fangs and pupils are a little too large. But I do have one question. Why did NECA use SOS Goji instead of Kiru Goji? If you haven't noticed already, that's actually a scar. This is what he looked like in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. How he got the scar is kinda interesting. Mechagodzilla, or in this case Kiru, had a weapon called the Absolute Zero Cannon. When they crashed into the ocean, it was activated and froze the water around them. This not only damaged Godzilla, but also Kiru himself. In Godzilla Tokyo SOS, the wound is still healing as a scar. So to sum it all up, SOS Goji is just Kiru Goji, but with battle damage. The figure got a repaint based on Mechagodzilla's Mazer attack on him. But I have to ask again, why did they make this? There was no Mechagodzilla figure released to accompany it. I mean, it would've worked, NECA also did figures for Pacific Rim. So overall, despite its flaws, this is my favorite Godzilla incarnation NECA has ever produced. Finally, let's take a look at our last era, the Riwa slash Legendary era. The first one we'll be taking a look at is Godzilla 2014. Fun fact, this is to my knowledge the last thing I ever bought at a Toys R Us. Yeah, this really goes to show you how old this figure is. There really isn't that much for me to say about it, I think that it is a really good figure. Although I do think that the paint on the figure is a bit too dark. Now back during the release of the 2014 movie, NECA released a giant 24 inch tall Godzilla figure. But this was only the 2014 design, sadly NECA never made any other versions of Godzilla in this style. And this wasn't just an upscaled version of the 6 inch figure, this thing had more in store. It had a fully articulated tail and a button that allowed it to roar. The next incarnation we'll be taking a look at is Shin Godzilla. Now there is a bit of a long story behind this thing, this is actually my third NECA Shin Godzilla figure. That's because the hand of the first one I got went missing. I then bought a second one to harvest its hand for the first one. Unfortunately, I used hot water instead of a hairdryer to warm up both of the figures, so the paint on both of them washed off. And you may be asking yourself why didn't I order a replacement part or just kept the newer figure. It's because I'm an idiot, of course. And so, I reluctantly bought a third one. With that out the way, let me tell you why this figure sucks. This has nothing to do with Shin Godzilla's design itself. I like Shin Godzilla's design, but my goodness, this figure is a total letdown. First of all, the paint on his dorsal plates look really hastily put on there. There is too much red on them. And that isn't the only place where there's been sloppy paint applied to this thing. The paint on his face looks like a mixed mess. It does not look good. And the teeth don't look like they're properly sculpted in. The paint on his claws look really rushed and messy, like they were put on there last minute. What's worse is the paint on the tip of the tail. I know that while NECA figures have good paint applied to them, they're not well detailed, but my goodness. Couldn't they at least try to make it somewhat accurate? Wouldn't it have killed them to give it a bone-like color? And what the heck are these small little bits of yellow paint on it? As for the tail itself, it is the worst tail out of all of these figures. Because each segment of the tail is sculpted at an angle, it looks horrible. Horrible when you try laying it down. It also doesn't help that the part of the tail that was separated in the packaging won't plug in fully. Even when I tried warming it up with a hairdryer, it's still loose. When I was recording myself showing off the tail, it fell off. And that's not the only thing that falls off too easily. At the base of the leg, when you try to rotate it, it easily pops off and the joints on the ankles are exposed, and it's kind of difficult to hide them. The loosest part of this figure is at the base of the neck. I can't even rotate it properly without it falling off. 
And the thing I hate the most is the head. This is what it looked like when it was in the packaging. This is one of the many reasons why people don't like the Playmates figure. And what's worse is that the prototype head for this thing looked so much better. And before you say anything, this is not a bootleg figure. This is a figure licensed by Toho themselves. You have to be a real idiot to put their names on a bootleg figure. So overall, out of all the Godzilla figures, this is honestly the worst. If anyone has the same problems as I do, please let me know. Because I can't be the only one. And the last Godzilla figure we'll be taking a look at is Godzilla 2019. And this is honestly my favorite figure. It's right up there with SOS Goji. The painting and sculpting on this figure is magnificent. I love looking at this thing. Now I know that someone's going to point out the eyes and mouth not being painted properly, but compared to the rest of the figure, it doesn't bother me that much. A part that does kind of bother me is a section of the tail. For whatever reason, a few sections of the tail is painted in a more darker color. This unfortunately sticks out more than the paint on the face. So overall, this alongside SOS Goji is my favorite figure. Now this did come with a repaint, that being the Atomic Breath version. I know that I said that I don't like the Atomic Breath version of these figures, but in this case here, it works on its own. After all, in the movie itself, Godzilla is constantly pulsing with nuclear energy. The Atomic Breath piece itself looks like a long blue Q-tip, and unlike the rest of the Atomic Breath pieces, the inside of it is hollow. And just like the rest of them, you open up his mouth, you shove it in there, and there you go. However, there is one other piece that comes with it, and that's this impact piece. And while it is decently painted and sculpted, the plastic on this thing is really thin. There is even a piece of it that broke off. And of course, you put it at the end of the atomic breath piece. It doesn't tab in, it doesn't plug in, it just sits there. What's the point of this thing? It's just a piece of plastic. None of the other figures had this. Unfortunately, due to how this thing is sculpted, you can't recreate that one scene from the movie. But this thing has nothing compared to the 2019 Burning Godzilla. Heck yeah, this is the best figure out of all of them. And unlike the previous Burning Godzilla, this entire thing thing is partially transparent, so when you shine a light through it, it looks amazing. And so, those were all the NECA Godzilla figures that I have in my collection. But wait, there's more! During the release of Godzilla King the Monsters, NECA released figures of Mothra and Rodan, and the first titan we'll be looking at is Mothra. While it does look nice, the figure itself is very fragile. As you can see, one of the hinges at the wings is broken, and I had to super glue it. And if you're not careful, the wings themselves can break off. I really don't like how thin the plastic is. As previously stated, the wing is on a hinge joint, along with the one on the bottom. However, the legs just move back and forth except for the ones on the chest for some reason. The only accessories that this thing comes with is her chrysalis base and the stick that holds her up. There was a cancel accessory, that being her larval form, and it would have been nice if they kept it. The repaint that she got is just based off of her appearance on her poster, and that's really it. So overall, despite how it looks, I'm not really a big fan of it, as it can easily break. Heck, that job has already been done for me. And the final figure we'll be looking at is Rodan. This figure really, really confuses me. So this is the base for a stand. Just kidding, it's actually this explosion piece that looks like a muffin that blew up in the oven. So here's the stand itself, and when you plug it in, it looks like it's sloping at an angle. And I might as well talk about the stands themselves. This is Rodan's stand, and this is Mothra's stand. To use Mothra's stand, all you gotta do is just find a place on her body to clip her there. It seems simple enough, but let me ask you this. How the heck do you use Rodan's stand? There is no part of his body where you can securely clip the stand onto, and every time when you think it fits, it always falls off. Now you gotta be really careful when it comes to sticking the stand into the base. The hole at the base is really deep, and the stick itself is thin, so if you move it too much, then it might snap. In fact, that's what happened to me. This is actually my second Rodan figure. And even if you get him up in the air, the stand itself is not secure on Rodan, so he wobbles around. This is really not good for a display piece as it can easily fall over. So much for looking like a flying piece of beef jerky. Speaking of which, the paint on this figure looks really plain. I get that his skin is supposed to look like cooled down lava, but at least add in a little bit more orange to it. There's a swivel at the head and neck, and the legs are just solid pieces. They don't rotate all the way because of the tail. And I call them solid pieces because there's no other articulation than that. And there is no articulation on the main body. It is just one solid piece. 
And just like Mothra's wings, they are extremely thin. Heck, they're not even worth talking about. All you need to know is just that they're on hinges. You wanna know what is worth talking about? The head. For whatever reason, NECA decided it was a good idea to give Rodan swappable heads instead of a hinge at the jaw. So if you wanna give Rodan a different expression, you have to constantly swap out heads in order to do so. I mean, it's nicely painted and sculpted, but why did it have to go through all the trouble just to give Rodan an open mouth? You could've gave him a hinge at the jaw. Heck, there's no other place to put the head on the stand. In fact, the head is so small that while recording this scene, I thought I lost it not knowing that it was right in front of me. The only place where you can put it is on one of the towers sculpted on the base. So overall, this figure is more or less up to you if you want to buy it. I don't recommend it, but like I said, it's up to you. But I am glad that NECA made figures of other monsters in the Godzilla series. Sadly, in 2020, NECA lost the rights to Godzilla in have discontinued their line. Now you can still find these NECA Godzilla figures in stores, but their numbers are slowly decreasing, so I recommend buying them online. And if you're gonna start a collection, I recommend getting one of these guys. I thoroughly enjoyed collecting these things and the memories I made with them. They made some of the best Godzilla figures I've ever owned at an affordable price. I remember looking for both burning Godzillas to add to my collection, and I remember getting hyped over the announcement of SOS Goji. And it's a shame that they'll no longer be making Godzilla figures. I hope that you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, nobody else is around. Time to watch my favorite Godzilla movie.